Thank you and welcome to the Selectman's meeting Tuesday, January 7, 2014 at the High School Media Center. Tonight's agenda is 7 p.m. is Citizens Input. 705 Chairman Solvents Update, which will be done by Ms. Brew tonight. 715 p.m. public hearing transfer of annual wine and malt package store license for Shaz Inc. GBA JAK Corner Store, 79 Summer Street, manager Shakatella Gatapali. Excellent. And 7.30 public hearing, application for one direction, where we are, tour concert at Gillette Stadium, 7.45 p.m. planning board and joint meeting with the board of selectmen has been postponed for two weeks. We won't be doing that tonight. And 8 p.m. is John Spinney, who will be actually going on at 7.03. Uh, town manager recruitment update, 815 Board of Selectmen, Springbrook Road discussion, 8.30 p.m., Attorney Rich Gellerman, Attorney David DeLuca on Splitsville, and at 9 p.m., we'll be going to executive session to discuss strategy regarding litigation matters, well, the Dutton case. Okay. James, will you lead us in the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. John, would you like to come forward? Oh, sorry, citizens' input. Seeing none. John, could you please come forward? Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Board of Selectmen. Um, I appreciate you taking me early for another commitment I have at 7.30. Um, I just wanted to spend a few minutes at the um, at the request of uh, Lorraine Brew, who's kind of aiding and helping us run this manager search committee, and give the board an update on what's happened so far and what we think the uh, um, the plan is for the next several weeks going forward. Um, and just for the, the public's benefit, um, this seven member committee uh, is comprised of myself, Frank Spillane, uh, Dave Brown. John Mitchell Moore, Kevin Penders, Kevin Weinfeld, and Bill Yuckna. And we're assisted by the Collins Center at the University of Massachusetts uh, with uh, Richard Kobayashi and Maria Cardi. And um, just to give the board a, uh, a, a quick overview of what's happened so far, we held a, uh, uh, our first meeting in uh, early December to kind of organize ourselves and select a chairman and secretary. I'm, I'm the chairman, and uh, Kevin Penders is the secretary. Um, and, and just kind of got the lay of the land in terms of how the process was going to play out for the next month or two. Um, the, the Collins uh, Center uh, sent out the, the job description that was put together uh, by the Board of Selectmen in, in, in um, I think, in concert with them. And we received back 35 resumes back to the Collins Center. Um, they screened those 35 resumes down to really 20, really, we would call very highly uh, qualified individuals or 21 qualified individuals and um, in, in the first meeting we held after going through all the resume screening we, we basically down selected from the 21 resumes uh, down to nine uh, candidates we thought would fit um, the job description the town uh, and they would have the qualifications we thought were necessary to fulfill this role um, we've held six uh, interviews so far in two two sessions so we do an hour interview for each candidate all seven of us are in the room um, We've got a, a very kind of scripted set of questions, so every candidate gets the same questions. Um, we do give the candidates uh, time at the end to to make a closing statement or say anything they want to uh, that we may not have asked. Um, our last three interviews will be held tomorrow night um, at, uh, I think here in the media center actually, no, at the Hearn School, excuse me. And, um, and then after that meeting tomorrow night is, is our expectation that we'll end up selecting um, what we believe to be our group of finalists. Um, those finalists we will submit to the Collins Center who will be at the meeting. And, and somebody from the Collins Center has been at the meeting, um, each of the interview sessions and all the meetings we've held. Um, the Collins Center will go and, and, and do all the background checks, quarry checks, any of the uh, educational checks, reference checks on our finalists and then come back to us. We're expecting on the 21st of January to have all the background checks done, them reporting back to us at a meeting prior to the Board of Selectmen's meeting. And um, if uh, all, all of our checks come back, um, and uh, my expectation is that I, I think they will, um, 
based on the candidates we've seen so far and the ones I think we're going to see. Everybody seems to be pretty well qualified and, and, and looks good on paper so far and have, have interviewed well. Um, we'll present at the January 21st Board of Selectmen meeting our finalists for the Board of Selectmen to interview um, and then uh, finalize a, uh, a, a town manager uh, out of this process. That's, that's kind of where we stand today and um, it's, everybody seems to be working well. It's a good group, uh, well qualified, getting good help from the Collins Center and yeah, I think we're getting some, some good, um, we've seen some good applicants and I think this will be a fruitful endeavor, you know, come the end of January. I, I really appreciate all the work that the committee's done. I attended the first kickoff meeting just to introduce the charge and um, great group, great dynamic, very intense, watch out. <laughs> yeah. Not sure how we got selected, but <laughs> miraculously but, all seven of us showed up. Yeah. And so thank you and we'll be back on the you. 21st. Okay, thank right, you, John. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay. Lane, you want to handle the chairman's update? You got a couple of announcements uh, to make? Yeah, I just wanted to announce um, Sharon Wasson and um, has been conducting meetings that involves uh, a group of us who are working on the sign bylaw update. And um, through that process, we have selected a um, consultant, the Community Opportunities Group, to help us in developing uh, the revision of the bylaws. And next Thursday, January 16th, at 7 p.m. at the Boyden Public Library Community Room, there's going to be a Foxborough signed bylaw public workshop. And the purpose of that workshop is to provide education on the signed bylaw process and uh, the framework of the regulations to the public. They are seeking input from the public as to um, any ideas about uh, consensus on good design principles. What do people want to really see in terms of signage? Do you want to see electronic billboards? Do you want to see, you know, what is it that people are interested in? Um, they want, they are working to get feedback from business community and residents on regulatory and design issues and, you know, they are there to help us technically. So uh, this workshop is open to the public and we hope that uh, people will attend and, and just share their thoughts on signage uh, throughout the town. Any ideas that you have would be most appreciated. So, Great. that was it. The date, again? the date is Thursday, January 16th, 7 p.m. at the Boyden Public Library Community Room. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Seems like we've got a few more minutes before the public hearing starts. You want to go to some action? John? We can do that. We'll get it open. Um, action item number one is a request from the Bluefin Lounge at Bass Pro Shop for an early pouring of alcohol for events at Gillette Stadium begin at 1 o'clock in 1 o'clock p.m. in 2014. Um, I can make a motion, but I just wanted to clarify. Are we doing this only for Patriots home games? Correct. On Sundays? Mm -hmm. Only home games that start at okay, 1. Okay, so the all the letters are the same. Yeah, they get the same kind of letter with, that, with those same restrictions. Yep. Okay, so I'll make a motion that we approve um, a, an, an 11 o'clock opening uh, for Bluefin Lounge at Bass Pro Shop um, on dates when the Patriots are playing Sunday home games in 2014. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? At 1 o'clock. At 1 o'clock, yeah. yeah. Okay, next. Um, the second is... An application from Maureen Kraus, and she is requesting to be uh, appointed to uh, the Design and Review Board. So I'll make a motion for the Board of Selectmen to appoint Maureen Kraus, and I believe it's a three-year term. Is it a three-year term, Bob? I believe so, yeah. To a three-year term on the uh, Design and Review Review Board, effective immediately. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Okay, gift transfer okay um, this is a gift acceptance uh, uh, requested by the board and library and I move that the board of selectmen approve a gift to the board and library in the amount of fifty one dollars and three cents from the friends of board and library uh, to be deposited in a library gift fund second discussion all those in favor 
and Jenny, to, to your point, we are going to uh, meet uh, on Thursday with the department heads, and we're going to go over the gift letter and all of that. So mm -hmm. they'll, they'll start using it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, next, John. Okay, um, I'm going to go to um, number five first. Mark Small, who's uh, presently a member of the Foxborough Cultural uh, Council, has asked to step down from the uh, Cultural Council effective immediately. Um, and uh, thanks, Mark, for your service if you're watching. Um, but I'll move that uh, we accept the resignation of Mark Small from the Foxborough Cultural Council effective immediately. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Now, on the flip side, um, we have received a request from Aileen Ricker um, to be appointed to a member, to be a member of the Foxborough Cultural Council. So I move that we appoint Aileen Ricker to um, the Foxborough Cultural Council effective immediately. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Okay. Uh, item number six, inter-office of the minutes from the Board of Selectmen's meeting on December 10th, 2013. I'll move that we accept the minutes. Uh, hmm? The question was about that motion. Oh. <coughs> this is, <coughs> want to have some discussion on this first? I thought that was from November 26th. Yeah, the, the, those are the November 26th ones. Yeah. No. So. But I move that we accept the uh, minutes of December 10th, 2013 as written and presented. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? All right. And the last one, John? Uh, this is a request from Bay Colony Productions, uh, known as the Opium Theater. They're requesting a one-day um, beer and wine permit on uh, January 17th <coughs> from 6 o'clock p.m. to 10 o'clock p.m. Uh, they're having the Postcards from Heaven event again. I guess they've done this for a number of years. So I'll make a motion that we, um, give me a vote. Approve, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that we approve a one-day beer and wine permit um, for January 17th from 6 o'clock p.m. to 10 o'clock p.m. for Bay Colony Productions Orpheum Theater. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Okay, great. Okay, well, we can get ready. Everything's moving along pretty fast tonight. If um, all the parties from the next public hearing want to come forward and sit at this table, please, and we'll get ready in one minute, we'll read the notice. Please come forward and bring your, um, is that your attorney with you? Your husband? Just have, have a seat, please. Thank you. Yeah, right at the table, sir. Is there anybody else that you brought with you who might want to speak? Okay. Oh. Just checking. Okay, John. Read the public notice, Hey, please. Town of Foxborough Board of Selectmen legal notice. The Board of Selectmen of the Town of Foxborough, acting as the local licensing authority, pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 138, will conduct a public hearing on Tuesday, January 7, 2014, at 7.15 p.m. in the Foxborough High School Media Center, South Street, Foxborough, Massachusetts, on application for a transfer of an annual wine and malt package store license for SHAS, S-H-A-S, Incorporated, doing business as J-A-K, Corner Store, 72 Summer Street, Foxborough, Massachusetts, 020035. Manager Sakuntawa Garapali. The premise is a freestanding two-story building with a basement, one front entrance and one side exit. All interested persons are invited to attend the hearing. Thank you. Welcome. Sir, just your name for the record, please. Sastri Gadepali. It's probably on the application. Okay, yeah. It's application, John. Yeah, I think it, your name was on as a Gif something. Gift. Uh, yeah, the gift. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, if you'd like to introduce yourself to the board, it'd be great, and I understand you're from Sharon? Yes. Okay, so yes. you're gonna be purchasing the, the business and the inventory yes. at 79 Summer Street? Yes. Okay, great, any questions from the board? Uh, Mark, just one more. Okay. Just was wondering if you had any experience running a, uh, an alcohol licensed uh, facility before? No, I don't. You not, okay. Is there any training that they need to do? Yes, get they have a tips training. Uh, I wanted to do it online, but uh, I spoke when I spoke to 
police chief commissioner he suggested me that the uh, first time if i take up on in person, in person that will be mm -hmm. great so i i i am planning to take it on 15th of january in brockton okay thank you Lorraine? i'm all set thank you Chini? no that was my question okay thank you james yeah. no the application was very complete yeah, and so wish you the best of luck thank you it's a public hearing anybody from the audience wish to be heard in this matter Seeing none, I'll detain a motion. Okay, I'm, I move that we close the public hearing at uh, 7.15 p.m. 7.16, thanks. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'll entertain another motion. Okay, I move that we accept the transfer of the annual wine and malt package store license for SH. SHAS Inc. doing business as Jack Corner Store, 72 Summer Street, Foxborough, Massachusetts. The manager will be Sakantala Gadapali. I hope I didn't butcher that. No, you said correctly. Okay, thank you. He taught Second. Me. <laughs> Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Welcome. Yep, You're good all luck. set to go. Good thank luck. You. Thank you. Be careful. All right. We had a schedule here. I don't know if there's anything else we can do. Now, those people want to be here, I would imagine, for Springbrook discussion. Um, joint appointment is going We do the uh, Will We Are Tour concert, the uh, representative. Can we do that? That's a public hearing. Oh, public, yeah. public okay. hearing. Mm -hmm. I can give you a little background on the Springbrook, and then we can talk about Let's it more fully, because I think it's going to be some time involved with that. Yeah, I figured there would be, too. So. Okay. So if, if you recall, uh, back in the summer, it, it, this first came up. I mean, it's been back and forth for probably a couple of years, but it came back before the board. There's been some issue with um, street parking and so forth on um, East Belcher Road and Springbrook Road. So. Um, I had a meeting with all of the uh, abutters, uh, uh, including the uh, people from the rank, and um, I, we came up with a potential solution f for that. And, and obviously, because you're the road commissioners, you need to vote on signage and no parking and things like that. So we'll get into a, a more full discussion. But essentially, uh, you know, part of East uh, Belcher Road, on one side of the road, is not uh, non-parking already. Um, and the solution for Springbrook would be to have one side be no parking and the other side be parking um, during the business days. Um, on the weekends, it's not as much of a problem because the businesses aren't open. And a lot of the rink business is on the weekends. Um, so it would allow for some overflow uh, and it'd be more structured parking and, and be easier for the uh, police to um, go up there and, and control it so that's hopefully the way it works out but some of the parties will probably be here and we can get into a more full discussion when they're all here but I remember we had the um <coughs> that discussion back in well I think it was before the summer Bob and we did ask you to reach out yep and try and yep and we had it we had a very good meeting uh, that you know there's still a little bit of a disagreement as to uh, East Belcher Road per se I, I know um, the rank owner would like to um, maybe uh, be allowed to have some limited parking there near the rink um, during overflow, so we can talk about that. And I, I think Rich should be here. You know, unfortunately, this was scheduled back on the night we had the snowstorm, and so I'm not sure if all of them will all be here. I know I, I spoke with Mr. Bressy. I expect he'll be here, uh, and um, Art Round should be here, and. I hope that Rich Tuzos will be here as well. Um, but I, I, you know, we all had a, a pretty good, healthy discussion. I know that uh, Rich Tuzos and Andy Felix have kind of worked cooperatively to a certain degree. Uh, Andy's uh, employees have been using Rich's lot, and we were waiting until Rich's lot was usable because it was under construction, and now they at least have a base coat, and and it's striped, so you can. You know, control the parking to a certain degree, um, and and I think Rich expects that there may be an occasional overlap where they have a game that goes a little bit longer, or they have a game. I, I know they had one recently where they had, 
I think it was Mansfield and KP, and so you had two surrounding towns, and so they had a little bit of an overflow. And most of the time it's on a weekend and, and there's not a lot of uh, public traffic there, so uh, for, for the businesses, it, it, you know, it doesn't turn into a problem, but it's something you know, we need to discuss and, and you guys can make a uh, decision based on that. But I think the plan is good conceptually, um, and you know they all have little things they may want tweaked here or there, but uh, the the area that may be of concern, and, and you'll all have to make a decision after you hear the information, is on the side of East Belcher Road that abuts the rink. And you know I'm I, I'm sure all of you have been up in that area at some mm -hmm. point in time. Um, you know it's a narrow road. There's a lot of uh, during business days. There's a lot of truck traffic. There's a lot of construction sites up there. Uh, Andy had his vehicles up there, which are large. There are some other areas where there are big uh, trucks, and so safety is a concern. So that's something you'll have to look at and make a decision. But I think Rich is interested in, you know, from the entrance of his rink down East Belcher, n not towards Cocas, up the other direction. I think he's interested in maintaining some ability to park um, just during overflow situation so um, but the policing may be an issue that's something we have to discuss that's what I was going to ask has Ed given you any feedback on uh, how Ed, the traffic management plan is working? Ed, Ed, Ed likes the idea mm -hmm. and he you know he was part of the meeting as well um, and um, you know if if there's a direction and he's given direction from you then he will you know send pe uh, uh, patrols up there just to make sure that they're abiding by the the rules and regs, but um, w w once we get permission to put signage and things like that, uh, Roger Hill had plans to stripe it, but he had done some uh, work on a Springbrook Road, and he had to wait. And you know, it, it's just timing. A lot of it's timing, so he'll yeah, do the striping. You gotta, I think you got to skim paved or something. Yeah, then winter set in. So they, that was in the maintenance, pro you know, uh, pavement man maintenance program. That was one of the streets that was done. I think it was a crack seal yeah. or so. He could not stripe uh, shortly after that, and now we're into the winter months. So, why is it cold out? Um, <laughs> depends on your definition of cold, I guess. <laughs> but this tonight, this is strictly discussion. We're not making any decisions. Well, I mean, you it. could. It, it, you know, I think we're at a place where it's pretty well come to a head um, mm -hmm. that, that you could make a decision because, you know, I think the plan is manageable, and um, but we'll see if if they have any other ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been going on now close to a year. I think it's time we have to make a decision tonight. So. Well, no, I know I've, I've spoken to um, a couple of people. Hopefully they'll be here tonight and they had some concerns. So. Well, no, nobody told me they weren't coming. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I, I think it, it has been a testament to the, uh, the neighbors mm -hmm. up there uh, that they've tried to work together to the best that they can. Um, and uh, there have been situations where there has been overflow and, you know, Ron, I know, has offered to allow his lot to be used by buses and things like that to accommodate some of the traffic issues. But only the last month or so have they really been able to see because it's now hockey season again and he actually has the lot done where he has it paved. And um, before it was a construction site and mm -hmm. there wasn't a lot of places to park. So, And it's the first season, so you're going to have – a learning curve on okay now we we have to go this way around and you know it's it's, it's like a, a one-way traffic kind of situation now where before you went in and out the same way um, so once he gets his teams educated then they know they have to go this route and it, it'll it'll work out it's just a question of time mm -hmm. okay. well we still got five minutes how much we can talk about, right? <laughs> this never—I don't think this has ever happened. What we've had. Uh, <laughs> not that we've had that much time in between. Yeah. Usually, we have a lot more action items too, and they take a little bit of time. Yeah. How do you do, Bob? In the first snowstorm, EPW-wise, plowing. I, I think you know everything went pretty well. We didn't have any major issues, as far as I know. Um, and you know, I think Roger, Roger, and his staff do a very good job. His supervisors have been here a long time, know the drill, uh, could do it without Roger being there. But you know, as soon as Roger hears from the police on 
he gets a call from the police <coughs> department if they get, get a call about slick conditions and they're right out. Mm -hmm. So they, they do a really good job. I like to commend them. Yeah, yeah that, everything I heard was positive. They yeah. worked hard and kept in front of it. Yeah, were the no parking signs up? You know, in, in the we have the we have uh, the signs up, up at town hall. Yeah. Uh, they were placed a uh, couple weeks ago. Um, I I don't know of any complaints. Yeah. Um, I didn't hear of any complaints about people parking there and not being able to get the trucks around. Mm -hmm. I was up there Friday during the snowstorm, and um, you know I I think I was the only car on the lot, uh, they, mm -hmm. uh, except for the town vehicles that were parked in the back. Mm -hmm. Nobody towed it. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Thank God, because it's a long walk back to East Foxborough. <laughs> um, we're going to run into this quite quickly again. Jess, I see you in the audience. Could you call Mr. Murphy and the group and tell them we're going to be way ahead of schedule tonight if they could come in? Okay. And um, we could reach out to our attorneys, Bob. Sure. Well, we've got a few minutes to tell them that we're going to be ready because, sure. I mean, this next application ain't going to take long. And then we got... You know, Springbrook at 8.15, we're 45 minutes away. Okay. And then we got this 8.30, this, this, we're going to be sitting here for an hour. Okay. So um, let's reach out if we could to these people and tell them we're going to be ahead of schedule. And, and Splitsville, I mean, not Splitsville, Springbrook, hopefully they come early because that's going to go off. I mean, it's not a public hearing, so we can start talking about it and we can make, you know, I mean... You know, they were here, though. Oh, I understand, but I don't know what the board's going to do for 45 minutes. Zumba. <laughs> you can do Zumba. I didn't bring my sneakers. You don't need them. I don't know. I'm not much of an athlete anymore. But you can dance, right? No. <laughs> Just a supporter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. We're getting close to the public hearing. As soon as Jess walks and we'll have that. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, getting back to the storm, Jim, that was kind of a tough one. It was all the blowing across the streets after you plowed them and, and a lot of salt. Yeah. I mean, the roads were pretty packed down. And it wasn't just Foxborough everywhere I went for, except for the highways. The salt doesn't work real well at 10 degrees. Yeah, I mean, it was minus 14 on Saturday morning. That's just really cold. But it seemed cold. And kind of Saturday ironically, morning. the last storm that we had last year, we crossed the town, lost a lot of power. The very last house, the Davins on Wayne Road, last year was the last house to have power restored. And I think the only house this year that lost power. A uh, um, truck hit the pole, the pole knocked down, ripped the wires out. Oh and, no. uh, I think it's the only house in town that lost power. <laughs> so. It is. <laughs> <laughs> you were there. <laughs> I was. In, I, I talked to him. Yeah. So. Did we supply them with a generator or anything, Chief? Uh, we we went through a system, but he, there was no way for us to actually connect a generator to his system. So yeah. we had to get an electrician in and all that. But uh, National Grid did uh, respond to it very quickly. Yeah, I think it was like 3 in the morning when they were still yes. working on it. Wow, that's so. dedication. Okay, John, I think it's close enough to read okay. the public hearing here. Jess, you want to come forward, please? Uh, hearing notice. The Board of Selectmen, acting as the local licensing authority pursuant to Massachusetts general laws, Chapters 140, Section 181, and Section 183A, and Chapter 136, Section 4, Town of Foxborough Revised General Bylaws, Article 5, Section 6, and also Stadium Rules and Regulations, will conduct a public hearing on Tuesday, January 7, 2014, beginning at 7.30 p.m. in the Foxborough High School Media Center to review the application submitted by NPS LLC for the One Direction Where We Are concert. Um, this event is proposed for Gillette Stadium. Application for this event is on file at the Office of the Selectmen. All interested parties are welcome to attend. Thank you, John. Just welcome. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So, so this is the uh, One Direction Where We Are tour. The application is for uh, Thursday and Friday, August 7th and 8th. So it's Thursday, Friday, which is a little bit of a unique scenario for us. Uh, both shows have gone on sale and they're both sold out, so anticipated attendance is uh, 50,000. 
the demographic for the show is unique in that it's even younger than Taylor Swift show. So we're looking at a lot of parents, guardians, and, uh, and children even younger than we've seen in the past. With that in mind, we're going to operate the same parent pickup and drop off location that we've used for the Taylor Swift events that's run well. Uh, and we're also looking into potentially bringing the train on board and having them run to help with uh, ease some traffic and to help with first time attendees to the stadium. But uh, that's something that we'll have to work through. We're working with the MBTA and through CSX as well. So the event start time is seven, the gates are six, and the parking lot will be established with Chief O'Leary and Chief Hatfield later on. Um, closer to the event day. The proposed end time is 11.15, which is her standard. The seating is all reserved. There isn't any general admission area. There's no pit, which we typically do have. Every single seat in the stadium is reserved. And the ticket prices are between $44 and uh, $112. Okay. you watch anything to add? Uh, well, just that they're gonna have North Street access. Uh, they have asked for access on North Street, which uh, I don't think is an issue, but you know I think is you know, hopefully helpful because it could become pretty congested with the kids, you know, the drop off. Yes. Um, the building construction was something that uh, Commissioner Caspera had just wants to be a part of, so that they establish, uh, um, you know, basically the uh, safety plans for the extensive construction up there. And um, again, the stadium is going to send out. Uh, email communications to all ticket holders which I think is a good idea and something that you've established now as a protocol for for all the events uh, and based on that and both chiefs uh, you know feel comfortable with it and uh, that we recommend for your approval based on the conditions of being acceptable to um, the uh, the facilities and fund the expenditures that uh, the public safety people feel unnecessary. Okay. John, any questions? I don't. I, I, I wish you luck. I know the kids are going to be pretty young. <laughs> It'll be loud, yeah. that's for sure. Right? No, I'm fine. Thank you. Ginny? Yes. Yeah, all set. James? No, the concert's very well received and it's got a lot of good publicity. And thank you again there. to you know, Hatfield, O'Leary, and George Bell for sending letters and it's very complete. Good luck with it. Thank you. George, you've been serving as Stadium advisory for quite some time, haven't you now? A while. I, I don't even remember when I started. So it was before me. A while. <laughs> I mean, you're young. Yeah, I know that. A while. I mean, it's been well over ten years, hasn't yeah. it? It's uh, it's been a joy. Great. Yeah. Well, we appreciate nice, your service. Uh, oh, you're very kind. Mm -hmm. Enjoy doing it. Mm -hmm. This is a public hearing. Does anybody wish to be heard in this matter? Seeing none. A uh, motion to close the public hearing. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Another motion, John? Okay, I'll move that we uh, approve the application submitted by NPS LLC for the One Direction Where We Are concert um, to be held, and I don't even have the date. August 7th. August, August 8th. Oh, here it is. August 7th um, and 8th. Um, gates open at 6 o'clock. And um, all reserve seating, which is good. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Okay, great, Chess, George, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Nice to see you. Good night. <coughs> All right, we're going to have to jump into Springbrook. And if they join in on us, I mean, this is unfortunate. What, what would the board like to do? You have the pack of things you can sign. Oh, we can do that. Um, why don't we take a. We got to do that and start the discussion with the people coming. Yeah. We'll take a 10 minute recess, Frank, and see if we can regroup here because we've never been this far ahead of schedule. Thank you, Frank. Okay, we're uh, way ahead of schedule tonight, so we're going to start talking about the Springbrook Road discussion, and um, hopefully, everybody that's uh, going to be attending shows up a little early because we need to keep moving forward. Right. So, Bob, you want to review? Sure. Um, I asked Ron to jump up and join us at the table if he could, because he can fill in some of the details Okay. if, right. if I miss some of them. But um, we had a, a meeting with uh, most of the people who own property up on Springbrook Road, mm -hmm. uh, East Belcher Road, Arthur Rounds, Rich Tuzos, Andy Felix. I don't believe Andy was at the meeting. No, he wasn't. He wasn't. Um, 
and maybe one or two others that are missing. I thought it was a very productive meeting. Um, we came to some conclusions, which I think that we hope you share. Um, the intention was, as, as I explained a little bit earlier, uh, the one side of uh, East Belcher Road that abuts uh, the highway has been non-parking, uh, as, as far as I can remember. Um, Springbrook Road has not been designated as no parking, but the conclusions that we re reached uh, in the discussions were that um, the side abutting the uh, ice r uh, rinks would be listed as parking with designated spots. Um, Roger Hill will stripe those. As I indicated earlier, he was doing crack seal up there, which happened in November, mm -hmm. and be because that has to cure, he was not able to get the striping done uh, and now he can't stripe it at this point probably until the spring uh, because you need to have like a 50 degree day or higher for an extended period of time for the paint to dry. Um, and then the other side of Springbrook Road would be designated no parking. Um, you know, Art Rounds developed that project and he, he lives in the area. He still has land up there. He's very concerned that with the way the parking has been traffic flow obviously is a problem but also <coughs> you can't grow grass and, and he wants it to look really nice and professional okay. and you know I think everybody respects that and, and would like to see that as well so uh, we thought as a group that this would be the best way to handle Springbrook and it allow for the best traffic flow as you remember the uh, the ice arena now is allowed with the parking flow to be one way back out to Springbrook and back onto uh, East Belcher Road. And hopefully over time, all of uh, Rich's uh, customers will understand that traffic flow and it'll make that whole situation a lot better, a lot more fluid. Well, if I may interject sure. on, on Rich's traffic flow, yep. I noticed uh, the other day that he has put up one-way signs uh, directing everybody out that direction not to come back through the front side of the building. He also has temporary one-way arrows painted on the binder coat that he has as well so yeah he's taking every step he can to make his traffic situation work and it has not been a problem yeah. excuse me <clears throat> and there was one day um and ron, ron will be able to attest to it because he, he was aware of it where there was a an overflow and they had a was it kp and it was a, on a saturday there was yeah, a king kp and mansfield. and mansfield yeah and king philip was asked to bust their players and they didn't so you had 20 students drive over in cars plus spectators Mansfield had 400 spectators show up to the event uh, but within an hour's time the traffic that had overflowed onto Springbrook and again this was on a Saturday within an hour's time it was all gone the game was over everything moved off and my concern as a business owner down there is more than Monday through Friday Springbrook uh, be kept as open as possible on the weekends, it's a ghost town. After 4 or 5 at night, it's a ghost town. And if there is an event where he happens to have the overflow parking, it only makes sense that you know they use it for the hour or two as needed. Okay. Hey, Rich. How you doing? Good hey, yourself? Uh, yeah. Good. We're way ahead of schedule tonight. Did you know text? Yeah, I did. <laughs> so, Rich, I've already filled them in that uh, on Springbrook, it's going to be parking on one side and non-parking on the other side. Uh, designated parking areas on the side adjacent to the rink uh, with uh, no parking signs on the other side on East Belcher Road currently it's the one side adjacent to the highway that is uh, no parking and I've indicated to them your concern that you have a certain area where they can park um, especially during overflow situations so if you want to fill the board in on your concerns there um, you know they, they'll take that into consideration Basically, you know, East Belcher Road is a dock road, and, you know, the town has talked about putting lights up there. Springbrook is very well lit. We don't, with, with Springbrook, we don't interfere with the everyday business at Springbrook. Our business is at night or on the weekends. And what I've done is, you know, I worked with Annie Felix and Tree Tech to get the vehicles that were affecting the businesses on, on 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 Springbrook Road to have them park on our property D during the business during the yeah. business days in hours and we found now 
with the high schools going on, and, and basically it all has to deal with high school events. And it's probably about you know six, half a dozen to eight events a year that we have, you know, issues. You know, this past one we had an issue because of the snow and a lot of the lines in the parking area were covered, so people were parking kind of erratic. We had people parking people, but they just the spaces were too big and everything else. We found that you know parking on Springbrook has been safer and easier for people than on East Belcher Road. We've worked with the police. We haven't parked anybody on East Belcher Road. Some people have parked there without us being there for their own, you know, they've been the first time there and they see some cars, so they park and they walk up. But I just feel with the board, I feel if we could utilize on off hours and on weekends, probably six to eight times a year, if we could utilize both sides of Springbrook, that would be more conducive than being out on East Belcher Road. It would be safer for the people. It's lit. The entranceway on the south sides work well. I mean, I'm not looking to interfere with anybody's business. I've worked well with Ronnie. Yeah, and and I was just saying before you walked in how you've put the one-way signs up and the striping and the arrows in the parking lot at this point. So, um, I mean, that's what I asked for the board. I mean, I've, like I said, I've, I think I've gone above to help Andy out with his problem and help the town on the flip side with that by getting those vehicles off the road. And You're suggesting no parking at all on East Belcher Road on each side? I have no problem at all if the police tow in a, in a heartbeat on that. But I, they won't do it unless there's no parking. So we have to put up no parking. Are you suggesting to the board that you want no parking signs on East Belcher Road? Yes, and as long on as both I... both sides. On both sides. You can do both sides as long as I have the two sides of Springbrook. So I think what you would do on Springbrook is you would have the one side striped and you'd have signs on the other side that would have no parking during the business hours. Exactly. And then on nights and weekends that would be available. Okay. Yeah, that's good fun. So, so, Ron, you have no problem with Springbrook having just one side no parking? I thought you no, preferred I, both sides the during majority, business hours. The majority of Springbrook Road issues have been very well taken care of in the last mm -hmm. few months. Andy and Rich have been working together, uh, and it's been working out fine. Okay. My concern that I had prior to that agreement coming to fruition was the fact that 40, 50 vehicles out there, and then if Rich had an event with overflow parking, we had a major cluster. Yeah. But it's, it's actually, it's been working out very well. Okay, so, so parking on one side is allowed during business hours and yeah, no parking on the other side. Yeah, and that's something that was discussed And do, do you have a preference well. on which side of the street? Well, it should be, as Bob recommended, on the same side as the rink. The other side of Springbrook Road has the, the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And if, we, if that side were to stay open to you know, not be striped, I think it would be a little easier for pedestrians as well, if, if there is pedestrian traffic there. Jim, anything? Really? No, it, it, I mean, it's going back, it's two successful businesses trying to yeah. make the best of that area. And, and your letter says you represent a lot mm -hmm. of the business owners, yeah. not, not right. so much the planning board, you right. remember, but right. uh, your, your business, right. the other businesses. The planning businesses. board, we have no jurisdiction on yep. the roads themselves. Everything that the planning board required in Rich and his site plan review, he has done, and it's, it's working as, as well as can be expected. Yep. So unless I'm missing something, it sounds like police, fire, DPW, the business owners, the planning board, zoning board, everyone's touched this over the last Six year months. and a half yeah. at least. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is going back till before August. <coughs> as long as we're not stepping on the toes of the planning board or zoning by doing this, which I don't think we are. I, I have no, I think this seems like a good solution. And I think until recently we haven't had a really good idea because I indicated before you got here, Rich, is that your parking lot was just done at the end of the summer fall time and your season really is just starting a month or so ago well full we, tilt. yeah for, we we're, we're pretty busy all year round but it's just the high school events yeah. when you have the students the families and that's when we have in during high school games you know Foxborough is playing Mansfield North Ottawa is playing you know um, someone else local then it just it's busy but it you know it hasn't been 
it's been a lot better than it was last year. I can tell you like that in years past. It's been a lot better. You know, we manipulated the schedule. We have at least five parking attendants out there when we know we have a problem come arising and the police police department's been there with details and it's worked well it's you know other than you know we had you know one some people parked out on east belcher road the other day but it was like about 10 cars because they didn't know and we ended up moving them with the, you know we had our parking tenants make sure that they moved and they moved well there's no signs there at the moment so they, they can legally park there. but i, I we've made it a a, a, a a serious attempt to keep them off there because it's like <clears throat> You know, taking a horse to water. Once you teach him, teach him, teach him, they're gonna figure it out for themselves. And so, so this whole issue in, in the town's involvement by restricting on um, Belcher, uh, prohibiting on Belcher, and restricting on Springs Brook, only works if this agreement is signed with your business, allowing another business, Tree Tech, to park on your property. Has this agreement been signed? It has not been signed. Okay, so if we do these uh, if we prohibit and restrict and this agreement is not signed um, it's not going to work because if we don't allow the parking and tree techs trucks have no place to go ie your lot because it's not agreed then where are they going to go Andy, we were waiting for Andy, this decision. Andy, the people at the, home, the can't. chicken or the egg? <laughs> pull, pull up, just pull, pull, pull up a pull chair, chair up there. Because right. the people at home, will you, they'll, they'll text me all night. Yeah. In, in other words, Andy, what I'm, what I'm saying is, if we sign this and then restrict the parking, and this agreement doesn't work out, in according to the exhibit, the lot one or lot two that you're allowed to on the rinks property doesn't happen, you've got no place to go. Well, I think we will. Uh, you lost me on that a little bit as to why that wouldn't work. Because I think the only reason we haven't signed this document is because we were waiting to see what what our limitations were going to be. So if we sign, if if I sign based on what the contract is, and where's what's the risk that you're talking about on, on that? No, but I'm yeah. saying if if we if the town restricts prohibits the parking on East is it East Belcher. Yes, East Belcher, and then restricts the Springsbrook to one side and you're not allowed to park on the rink property per this agreement mm -hmm. okay now the signs say no parking on the public right-of-way where where's your trucks and your your uh, employees gonna park if the contract doesn't work out yeah I don't know. in other words you'll be in front of us again to take That's the signs that. down <clears throat> I imagine you guys might have a gentleman handshake right now before we vote on well, this they, thing. They, they've already been doing it without the yeah. signing oh, they, agreement. Yeah. So. It's been working well. I mean, right. Well, it's just, you know, I mean, I, we're protecting uh -huh. both. Jimmy's point is he's trying to protect both your interests. No, interest. and I, I get it now, but I mean, I'm, this is a really important thing uh, for us to honor Rich's <coughs> wishes and uh, on this. And it's just like, it, I mean, there's no way that we're going to let anything happen on that that's all and I'm not saying right, I'm, I'm no, assuming I'm it's going to uh, get signed but I'm saying if, if right. we vote to do this tonight you're in a bind unless well, that let me understand. I don't really get that because we can then but what you're saying is we restrict one side of Springbrook that's all you're really talking about tonight any Belcher, right oh on uh, if I'm correct it's restricted on both sides except for weekends no, there, it is, no. There'd, be, there'd be parking allowed on one side. Of and Springsburg. Be, and there'd be striped park be striped parking. Yeah. Okay. And, and I'm going through when I did a drive through when this all came up <coughs> over the summer, and there was vehicles on both sides of Springbrook with no place to go. But that was like an ultimate bad time, Jim. No. I, I don't know. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> you know. So, so if we no, put it this way, if we go in the direction of putting the no parking signs up, we're done, right? We don't have any more, and we no, assume it's going to work it. out. The only thing we can do is vote to take them down someday. Yeah. And I um, well, never well, had that happen. Well, would you rather not vote until they sign the contract? <coughs> it doesn't make a difference to me. Oh. Yeah. You know, I'm just they, saying, buy it beware. They a signed yeah. agreement. They have, they have an agreement. They have a... I mean, will you guys sign the contract tomorrow? Absolutely. Right. I just wanted clarification from the board exactly what it's going to be. Yeah. Okay. That's bef that's why we haven't signed anything. Right. Just We just want clarification. I got one question, Mark. Go ahead, Joe. I, th I thought that you still were going to be able to use the rinks parking lot during the week. 
Is that no longer true? No, we, oh, yes. No, that's, that's, that's what they've yeah, been doing. Yeah, yeah. Right, and that, yeah. that's, that's your escape valve to, yeah, to be able to absolutely. do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, well, that makes sense. And you don't, really don't need that during the weekend. No. Yeah, no, right. Not at all. And Ron's off at his property for bus traffic and right, you know, yeah. the on, stuff. On so the they've major been events. trying to work cooperatively as a group. I mean, well, I mean, I love for mine as well if we're not, you know, on a weekend. Yeah. That's fine. So the so clarification what, what, I did on, on Springbrook, it would be parking on one side, which would be the rink side. Right. All is the it, time. Is that the north Stri side of Springbrook? Is that the north side? Yes. North and yes. West, one or the other. I could. It's the north. Yeah. The north. It's That's the way north. I have it. <laughs> yeah, it's the north. Yeah, right. So it would be marked and it would be parking. Yeah. And then on the other side, be we po no it would post it during business, uh, hours, business hours, hours, which is what seven to five or whatever. Parking on weekends only. Evenings and weekends. Or yeah. Evenings yeah. and weekends. Weekend you can leave it open. Yeah. You know, big enough that. I think. The highway department can figure out the signage, but we'll give. So the south side of Springbrook is during weekends only, in the evenings, evenings, in the evenings. off hours. Uh -huh. So in the worst case scenario, mm -hmm. um, we would just we would be forced to adapt to something else, to be in compliance. I think, right? Where does be the risk? <laughs> where does <laughs> easier also, said than? But there's well, no other place. Well, you don't know I the mean, property. You, know, you don't know the street. All, uh, you know, there's creative ways yeah. to go. And also, Jim, got a bus. <laughs> you know, the, uh, a document if they signed it tonight could become null and void tomorrow. So it's kind of a right. point. I'm not trying to be an obstruction. I'm just saying. No, that I know. It, no. In our packet, said the agreement's not signed. I'm surprised it's not signed. So I, I see, Rich, your why sign it unless you know what we're doing. That's you know, and all I'm saying is, if we sign it, you need to sign the agreement because you have oh, no we'll, other choice. Oh, we'll sign so it. Yeah. That's all. Okay. Um, just clarify yeah. not what exactly that. Yeah. Because I think there was confusion. So that's good. Question: Have you guys considered trash cleanup? Because you know, every car that opens the door, something falls out of it. You know. Well, we have we have employees every day in the morning yeah, go through the park. We could do better on our side for sure. You know how that. And goes. It's just blowing away. It's just blowing literally out of the trash sometimes. Yeah, or right. a dumpster. Right? Our, our directive at the rink is our employees in the morning, the same bone drive, They go from outside in cleaning trash emptying the barrels and trash that's that's the, that's our directive that's what's posted and that's what they do and um i know arthur rounds isn't here how was he with all this his main concern um i mean he's concerned about the whole thing but he, he was concerned if east belcher was going to be allowed parking at all now that rich has agreed that we if if we can do what we've talked about on springbrook he would agree to the both sides of east belcher being no parking. no parking um and Arthur will be very happy with that. Product. And the reason for that is we've worked hard now, working to see how it went before. Right. I was I didn't know, and I couldn't say to you, Bob, that this is what we wanted. But with the events that we've had, the high school events, we were able to keep those cars and whatever cars were out there, they did it on their own ignorance. And right. So who's the so author of this agreement? Is it you or is it you, Bob? Who we, we talked about it my collectively. My, my attorney. Oh, the, the, the agreement between them? Yeah. Who's my, I, my attorney wrote... <laughs> Drafted, it. drafted okay, so, it in, in so all, all we can do is is suggest that this condition be in your agreement. This condition doesn't have to be there. The, the no. agreement talks about them sharing <clears throat> parking times and things like that. It doesn't we, we, doesn't talk about the street because the street's a public place. No, what I'm trying to figure motions. out is if, if, if two we're, motions. What are one they? to ban park on East Belcher Road on right. both sides. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. That'd be motion one. Motion two would be to allow. Um, weekend and evening parking on the left side of the north side of north side, uh, Springbrook. Yeah. Right, I have that. And then the right side would be mm -hmm. uh, weekends, uh, but not evenings, evenings and weekends only. I got it all. Right. Well, the, the, the left side, side would be parking all the time. It would be right. striped. Yeah. The striped side would be okay. available for parking 24 7. And the, okay. and the and right this, side. The opposite side with the sidewalk would be restricted mm -hmm. to off hours parking. Here's your motion. I, I got it. Hit it. Okay. <laughs> Um, Can I ask the board one more thing? Is there any no. chance that the board could, you know, <laughs> because I had dealt with this several years ago, eight, nine years ago when we built the rink, and it came back that the, t the planning board couldn't do anything about it. The, the town DPW had to come through the board of selectmen um, putting some lights out there on East Belcher Road. I know the chief had put in his, his letter that he wrote to the, to the board about lighting that, that part of the road. It is dark. I would, you know, I would have thought that would be part of the planning board's 
decision on giving you the, the right to build it, the Well, right they, we tried that before, but the way the DPW and, the, and like whoever owns the polls, it has to come from the Board of Selectmen. That's what happened because the last time. Well, that time, would be something for another hearing because it's not posted. Yeah. So we okay. have to do that officially at another time. Okay. Uh, have you contact Sandra through the office and talk to uh, Bob? I'll talk okay. to Roger Hill about yeah. that and, and see how we, we do have that. another meeting. Okay. You know, do we have to petition okay. National Grid to put the pole up? Or do we put the pole up? At no, the, the poles, poles are there. Are there. It's the just putting there. lights on the poles. And somebody's going to pay the light. And what happened the last time, I went through National Grid, the planning board. It took two years and you know, the planning board was holding my bond, and then it came out that it had to come from the selectmen, and the selectmen wouldn't vote on it, so then the planning board released my bond back then. But, you know, being there 10 years now and seeing it, it is a dark road, and mm -hmm. it might be something Bring down the road. Forward. You know? Okay, John. Okay, um, I move that the Board of Selectmen acting as the road commissioners restrict uh, parking on both sides of East Belcher Road Second immediately. Uh, now, would that be have to post just it. for clarification? We got a second by Lorraine. As, as soon as it, we can post it. Well, okay. no, I'm saying how far East Belcher Road is a long road. Do we? Ban I, it I would say from Cocasset Street a to long road. Cocasset I mean, Street to Springbrook. Springbrook. From all right, so that's the that's the whole length. No, it no, 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 keeps on going down. down. Goes all the way around the corner. Yeah. Yeah. The Spring Springbrook. 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 That's what Arthur's concern is too. It's from Springbrook to Cocasset. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I think that it needs to be in the in the. So I'd ask you to amend your motion. Okay. Let me do it again. The board of selectmen, as acting as road commissioners, um, I move that we restrict parking on East Belcher Road. Um, restrict both sides of East Belcher Road from Cocasset to Springbrook. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Okay, I also move that we uh, restrict parking on the south side of Springbrook to uh, evenings and weekends only. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Okay. Now, do, now, do we need, uh, I mean, is um, East Belcher enforceable without signs? I don't know. The chief. No, have to be, no, we need. They'll have to be signage, and yeah, I'll talk to. to uh, okay, so it really doesn't take effect so. until we can get signage up. Right. So okay. I mean, there is some signs up, and but we'll, they still don't. I we'll, put them up. If you could put on your website some of this information, and you know, allow people to be a heads up that they some people, you know, it's every week they park. You know, same people. So you want to alert people, and then maybe put something out in. The building saying, "Please do not park there. There's no not parking." We've we've done it, but we'll keep on doing. We yeah. put we put signs out there and, and metal signs, and they still. So, because the first time around, we'll probably right have the police department, you know, issue warnings. Second time around, they're probably going to get the violation. That's fine. Okay. So, and that's all we need. We don't have to have any motions on the north side of East Belcher Road. No, it already it exists. It's so. just going to be a park. Yeah. Okay. And I'll have the, the agreement signed. I'll bring it to Bob. Okay. But Andy, during the yeah. week, you still have spillover or an escape valve for your trucks, right? That's yeah. all. Still. Yeah, the striped yeah. side of that's Springbrook still in will place. Okay, right, that. but that um, you know will definitely be conscious of the whole situation. Yeah. <coughs> I'd just like to publicly thank Rich, you know, for offering up this deal and helping my business stay in compliance. It's a good thing. Thank yeah. you. It's worked well. Good neighbors. Yeah, man. I want to thank everybody involved because they, they did work cooperatively and you know it was a good experience. I mean, nobody was at each other's throat. Everybody was trying to do the right thing. So. Oh, Ronnie, you did, <laughs> did a good job. <laughs> oh, I yeah. still like you, even though you. You're right. <laughs> okay, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. We're going to start the split spill discussion. You know it's early. Um, Mr. Cobry, I see you here. Do you expect more people from the craft organization to be coming? Yes, Dan Murphy tells me he'll be here in less than 10 minutes. Okay, well, we're going to start a little bit of this conversation, keep the ball rolling here. And when he comes, he can jump right in. So if you'd like to come forward, it's up to you. Uh, Mr. DeLuca, obviously, you'll be part of this discussion. And Mr. Gellerman's on his way? I believe so. Uh, Sandra was going to reach him, but um, I don't know how he's going to 
how she made out. But. Okay. Not often we so far ahead of, <laughs> I of know. time, and this could put us over. So I figured we could kick the ball off a little soon. Great idea. So, all right. Who would like to start, Mr. DeLuca or Mr. Colbury? Um, I, I don't have uh, so much to offer for the board at this point in time. I think this is a discussion that was planned uh, regarding uh, uh, any revisions or uh, reconsideration that uh, the board would have with respect to uh, the proposal that had been made some month or more ago. Um, I think that's what's come before this board now for public discussion. Uh, my report to you is simply that uh, just today I did get notice of, uh, of the appeal hearing, uh, which uh, first uh, preliminary hearing uh, will be uh, scheduled in March the 12th. Uh, it's a pre-hearing conference that we'll have at the ABCC relative to the denials that were made. Uh, my understanding uh, through Mr. <coughs> Elliman's office that there uh, has been some discussion and investigation of possible modifications that may, may or may not be of some appeal to your board as a whole. Uh, that's what I understood uh, tonight's meeting was about. And I'm anxious to, to hear along with everybody else uh, what, if anything, uh, could uh, uh, could develop uh, in this respect. Okay, great, thank you. Mark, well, I can report that uh, we had an initial meeting. Uh, John, myself, and Dick met with uh, Jim. Uh, Dan Murphy was there. Ted Fire. What, what's that? Ted Fire as Ted well. Fire was there. Um, Jonathan Kraft actually uh, appeared and, and talked to us for a little bit. Um, and that's the only meeting that we had as a group uh, in relation to this matter. And I, I don't know, uh, but I believe you and Dick have had other discussions. Yes, Dick, Cindy, and I have had uh, one additional telephone conversation. And then Dick and I had another conversation. Uh, conversations were relatively brief. Um, we were hoping to get together and talk live, you know, continue the discussion we started back in December. Um, but when Dick and Cindy and I spoke, we talked in general terms about things that we could possibly do with respect to the physical layout of Splitsville, with respect to uh, the number of patrons that could be admitted to the entertainment area, uh, uh, management of Splitsville, things of that nature. Uh, you know, some of them were, were really quite interesting and, and appealing to us. Others needed a little bit more explanation, to be perfectly frank. Um, we have some suggestions that uh, we can work with at this time. But I think, practically speaking, the, the best way to handle it would be, if possible, to get together and, and uh, go through what's, you know, what's possible, what, what is, uh, rec you know, something that you really are interested in. and, and you know, a good example of this, for instance, is you know Dick and Cindy and I talked about the possibility of having a um, walled partition around the entertainment area. And unfortunately, I didn't I didn't bring any drawings with me. And I'm sorry for that. But if you recall, when the Splitsville folks were here, the uh, the layout of the structure was basically to have uh, some bowling alleys in one portion that would be VIP oriented, have. Uh, roughly double the number of bowling area alleys in the opposite end of the complex and in the middle have an entertainment slash dining area with a concierge area to be at the opening that would basically um, be the place where people would come in and, and be directed to what they wanted to do one of the thoughts that uh, dick and cindy and i talked about was would it be possible to have some type of physical separation of the entertainment and dining area from the bowling alley area and we understand the concern. Um, having an actual physical separation, we think, would be a bit of a challenge. But we can do things to limit the access of folks when they come in or when they're in the bowling alleys into the entertainment area when Hull at the Moon entertainers are playing. So we have those types of things that we believe are, are available, we think are appealing. Uh, but to really iron them out, we probably should sit down with the drawing and, and talk it through and figure out exactly what you want and what we can do to make it happen. You mean here at the table? Well, you know, we're pretty open-minded. Whatever works best for you, uh, we can do it. The last time I was here, I think the board voted to ask uh, you and, and you, uh, Selectman Gray, to, to meet with us. Uh, we're happy to do that if, if you're able to do it. Um, 
it would be wonderful if you could suggest some dates and times and I'll coordinate with the folks from our office and also from Splitsville and from uh, Hall of the Moon. I, I tried that venue and it, it, it didn't work out. Um, the board did vote for that and then there was an issue where it became, um, it's still not clear, Dick it's would say it better than committee. me. Dick would be probably best to probably speak on that. With Sub subcommittee of the board. Yeah, it just doesn't work out. So, and then with all the um, slinging going around, I figured it's best to do it open and transparent here at the table. That way everybody's in the loop, everybody sees what's going on, and I don't see that there's any reason, and if there's a board member that dis disagrees with me, feel free to speak up, that if this, this board is, wants to have another hearing uh, I don't know is it a, not even a public hearing or what would you call it it's a, discussion. It a discussion a discussion at, at this point. table to see if you want and that's why I thought we were doing tonight I mean it's been three or four weeks now I thought that we were all getting together tonight to discuss some kind of compromise where this board would maybe vote to reconsider to have another public hearing but I guess that's we're all on the wrong page or that was that was what I thought was going to happen yeah I mean that's what I you know you talk about that last meeting Jim I said we'll see you here on the 7th and we're here and we'll discuss it and does anybody disagree with that no well I you know I Obviously, there's some level of confusion here. My, my understanding after the last meeting, and I, I've been here for every meeting except for the one on the 30th, but my understanding after the last meeting was that we would get together with someone from the Board of Selectmen and, and actually have this discussion that I'm talking about where you could uh, make suggestions to us about how you'd like to condition the license and we can make suggestions back about what we can do. We're prepared to do that. Uh, Dick and I and Cindy and I have had discussions, and... You know, at, at that level, you know, lawyers have had discussions. I think it'd be most beneficial if we could actually have someone from your board participate in those discussions. I, I actually instructed town council, I think it was before Christmas, I asked them you to have one more discussion with you about you get your list together and our group will get our list together and we do it here at the table. I don't know what's confusing about that. I really don't. I, I didn't receive that message, so I'm sorry. Uh, then why are we here? I mean, I, I, I've got Attorney Gellerman telling me that he has spoken to you multiple times, and you're concurring with that, but you just, the direction is different than what he asked you to do? Yeah, with Dick, you, as I said, uh, Attorney Gellerman uh, and I have spoken twice, at least. Um, we have exchanged... Uh, thoughts about how to restrict the the license, but I was really under the impression that we were going to get together with Selectman Gray and and talk, you know, continue and the we, discussion. And that's the third time you said that, and this is going to be the third time I said that I instructed Town Council that that was not going to happen, and that he needs to reach out to you, have you be prepared to come here on the thirtieth, I mean the seventh, which is today, and have an open, transparent discussion about it. Are you prepared to do that tonight? No, clearly not. All right, then I'll adjourn the meeting. If I could? Yep. I mean, I also received the notice today that there's an appeal scheduled for March. Um, it, it's it's going to be one of those. Dick, those please sit down. We're, excuse me, Mr. Jim. We're way ahead of schedule tonight, so we're just trying to have some open dialogue on Split Hill. Um, there seems to be some confusion on how. Um, I asked you to bring the craft group forward on the seventh here with to have a discussion on whether or not the board wanted to reconsider. Is that what I asked you to do? Okay. And Mr. Colbert, you want to reply to that? Mr. Gellerman? I, I don't know what I'm replying to, I'm sorry. I'm, I asked him to reach out to you. He did. To come here on the seventh with his concessions you wanted to make and with some, the board members were prepared to discuss whether or not to, reop, uh, to revisit the Splitsville discussion. And Dick, did you not transfer, transfer that information? I did. 
And and what I've just been saying, Dick, is that I was under the impression that at some point in time, based upon my last attendance here at one of these meetings, that we were going to sit down with Selectman Gray and talk through the alternatives and figure out if there was some common ground. And evidently, uh, that's not going to happen. And what should have, what I should have done is come here with with some type of proposals about what we would be prepared to do. And quite frankly, there's there's been some miscommunication. Is is you know we. So, yeah. and Dick, did I not tell you, I forget the date, at this point in time, I think it was prior, a week, almost a week prior to Christmas, that there would be no more separate meetings, that all transparency would be here at the table, and that you shouldn't... Yeah, you're pretty clear that you wanted a... I thought it was clear that there was to be a presentation of the change, whatever, modifications. Jim, you could make to your application. And what I've told them is that you and I discussed... Uh, some concepts that you, uh, you, Cindy, and I discussed concepts, and I went back and talked to the folks at uh, Splitsville and Hall at the Moon about them, and we have some, you know, alternatives. Uh, but I really thought the idea was to, to talk about them offline, get some general understanding about what would be acceptable, yeah. and then present that to the board. Well, I'm going to make it clear now, then. There will be no, no offline discussions. Everything will be done here at the table, and that's it. Um, due to the fact you may... Mr. Gellerman, Cindy, talk with Jim Cobry and the, 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 the Claft group and have some discussion. But no board member is going to be part of it. We're going to have the discussions here at this table because I'm sick of people accusing the board of open meeting law violations because we went to this meeting or that meeting or this meeting or that meeting. So it's all going to be done here. That's it. I guess that's the end of this whole discussion. So, so Mark, to be clear, you, you are asking Cindy and I to continue to talk to Jim and to work through whatever changes. I understand what the board wants from your collective responses to me. Mm -hmm. well, we, we've had this discussion. You and I have had it. I, I know I spoke to Dan Murphy last week and told him that was the way it was going to be. And he told me, geez, we didn't know, we didn't know about this. Well, you know, we've been talking about this for two weeks that they had to come ready to make a presentation today. And I think With I all due respect, we'll though, I mean, at the last public session, you know, the last time I was here before the Board of Selectmen, the two prior times that I was here, there was a contrary uh, discussion, right? We, on the, whatever it was, the uh, 7th of December, 8th of December. 23rd of November or December? I forget. There was a 23rd. We, Jim, you, you know what the date is. We, you made the motion. No, uh, November? November 26th, there was a motion made to for two people to go meet. And November then, 26th. And yes. then the next one was December 10th when yes. uh, the, the meetings didn't happen. We talked about it. And at the December 10th meeting, um, there was a direction that come back on the 7th. Now, I can go on, but I... I so, so it's clear. So, so, so you're right here on the 7th, but you... Not ready to make changes. Now, when I when I left here on the tenth right, of enough, December, enough. No, if I could, please. no, no, I've had enough. I'm not allowed I, to speak. I, I'm sorry, I had enough. Council, me with council, their council. Two weeks from today, if they're ready to come in, we'll have this discussion. I'm not going to have this he said, she said discussion again. This is getting ridiculous. I made it perfectly clear to town council and the town manager to come in and expect a presentation tonight. The board was amendable so that we could help possibly have a reconsideration vote for Splitsville. This is not what we're having tonight. We're having a he said, she said thing. It's very transparent, and this is why it's going to be open and transparent in front of the public. So everybody can see that we're not doing anything behind the scenes to make anything different. And that's it, because this is getting ridiculous. All right. But can I, can I just say something? Yep. I mean, there are, right. there are things that are presented on this sheet. Um, suggestions, I guess, from the board as uh, the other board members. But two of my th issues that I um, submitted to Dick are not even mentioned on here. So I think if we're going to discuss suggestions, I think it should be all the suggestions that were presented to, to Dick Mr. should be on there to make it public what all the selectmen uh, were concerned about. We're trying to appease the crafts group here. That's what the board is trying to do, to be a little bit you know, possibly see if we want to reconsider this. I've given you the opportunity. It's been well over a month and a half, well, I, and here we are. 
if I could speak, I'd, I'd like to say the following. I, we do appreciate your opportunity th that you're providing to us. But having said that, there's been some confusion here. I mean, going back to November, the board voted 5-0 that we should meet with you and with Selectman Gray. Enough. And we, and enough. No, I'm allowed been, to speak, no, Mark. Enough. I am. Enough. Mark, we I'm went, allowed to speak. I'm sorry. I am the chairman of the board of Selectmen. And, and, you are, and I'm listen, a citizen. Stop. Okay. I'm telling you to stop. We've had this we discussion before, We just went before, down though. this twice. You're trying to get under my goat. It ain't going to happen. We voted yes. And then it was told to us by council that we cannot do that. So we're not going to continue that. Then I made council talk to you very clearly and state, Dick, that we were not going to meet because of the ruling that is possibly a situation where it is a Bob, a what? A selected a subcommittee. So sub subcommittee appointed by the board of selectmen as an open meeting law violation. So we weren't going to do it. John Gray met with you only once. Then the discussion got further in depth. I said, okay, enough of that discussion. We're going to have it here at the table and open. If we're not going to do that, I'm not going to keep eating the bush here. I'm done with it. Mark, can I make a suggestion? Just everyone take a breath for a second. If, if Dick, if, if, you're going to be, if you guys are going to be meeting, I guess over the next two weeks now, we received a memo from Dick, which I think is the directive that you received from either collaboratively or what you heard from the meeting. And it sounds like you went and did meet with the craft group, and you gave us uh, 11 or 12 bullet items. So let's just briefly go over those. If there's other things that the board wants to add or subtract from those, or put their hands up and say, I'm done, or <coughs> maybe they say, this is great, let's approve it next meeting, something. But how do we tell Dick to go meet with the craft group and come back with something when no one's had the dialogue on telling Dick what to Talk to we've all so this this has to happen at this table. It can't, you know. So let me let me just go through this. Well, this is a memo. Like, Jim, I understand. I think it's a great idea, but he's already told us he's not prepared to do that tonight. Twice. Oh, are you prepared to listen for a few yes, minutes? Yes, I am. All right. uh, so, Jim, just a, I'm, I'm just wondering before we even invest any calories in this discussion, should we have a motion to reconsider, or should we only reconsider after we hear their uh, their proposal? That's what I thought they were going to bring a proposal to us. I don't even I don't even see why we should waste calories going over that because they have to bring a proposal in front of us. We need to digest that proposal and and and, I, I, you know, I, I, and judge it on its okay. merits and then decide so, whether or not we're going to reconsider so the uh, that's our fine. vote. So, Mr. Colbert, are you prepared to bring something in front? No, because I don't think he's hearing what he should be bringing in front of us. I, I mean, you're going to cut Dick, this. <coughs> have you been clear? They're, they're, they should be bringing their best and final proposal. An amended proposal from the one they already brought to us that we rejected, they should be coming back with, with an uh, amended proposal. Are you proposal. clear on what changes you need to make to bring your best, best and brightest forward? I, I, I'm just trying to put it on the table so at least there's something to go back to with this basis. I don't, I don't even if know if you, they have this list. Can, can, no, can if, I just? Yeah. yeah, please, Bob. We had a meeting, John, myself, Dick. We went over some of these issues. Some of it was to clear to the air, as John wanted to do. Yeah. Some of it was some of the issues that Dick uh, had heard from all the members. Anything that you wanted to bring to the attention of the craft group that may make the uh, application a better application. Dick, as far as I know, because at, at the meeting some of the issues were discussed, but you also talked to them uh, se subsequently and laid out some of those issues. As a result, a memo was sent to all the members about things that they could address. and I. My thought was that they were going to have a presentation based on that memorandum. Um, and, and is that what you understood, Dick? That's what I said. But, but two, two things. I, maybe, the, maybe the difference here is that uh, I've not been charged, Jim, to negotiate with you no. No. as to those conditions. I, my task, as I understood it, was to let Jim know what the board individually or collectively was looking for in terms of mod <clears throat> modification. But if you think that I have been authorized to sit down with you as I one might do as a negotiator, we're not, not doing that. No. So, so, that, so, so that, that's where, that. sec secondly also for the board's, uh, uh, for the board's edification, <coughs> it is not unlawful. <coughs> we could do it in two in a way that would not be unlawful. You don't want to go there. But if you wanted to have one member of the board join Cindy and I in talking 
if you wanted it. We could do that. There's, there's nothing unlawful about that. No, I don't. But what, I, I don't know if all the board feels because I've had I've had enough of this. You know, accusations about this board acting inappropriately. So I figured we'll do this all here at the open table. And I see no reason why we shouldn't. Why wouldn't the public be part of the process? Mark, I'm only uh, suggesting you know? that you can if you choose to. I'm not right. Well, be, that prior to that, it was with two. And then, you know, we, uh, we put a stop to it, Dick. And I'm going to keep repeating myself all night. Did you present a list to Mr. Cobry from the board? Yes. Okay. Was it all? All the suggestions. Actually, for frankly, to you, there, there were a couple of items that I did not include because I knew they'd be non-starters. So, I, but, can but I interrupt it, mm -hmm. then, then why did you ask us to submit things but if I you weren't going to? It's on your mind now. I know. <laughs> Cindy, please. Um, as the person who drafted this with Dick's input and Jim's input, I can say that the concerns that we received from all the board members we took and we discussed and this memo here is not supposed to be what was initially discussed with the craft group but after talking with the craft group things that we felt right wrong or otherwise may still be items that could be discussed so there were some things that were raised that were clear were not going to go anywhere and didn't make it to this document. If that mm -hmm. Well, I think those should still be uh, made public. Well, you can still you can still have that discussion when it comes that we have the meeting I thought we were having tonight that we would have everybody talking about what they will consider. Now, you make public whatever you want. This is all going to be public. Huh? So, Mr. Anyway. Chairman, may I, may I offer a suggestion here? Well, I don't have something I can present. I think it would be most helpful if we could go through this list and uh, figure out if this is the type of information that you're looking for. Mr. Chairman. We're going backwards again? We're going backwards. Yeah. The, I'm, just are we, I'm, I'm sorry, but no, how are we just going backwards? Hear me out. You, sub you submitted Excuse a... Excuse um, me. Do not interrupt, please. You, you submitted... Sorry, stop. Please. Stop. Interrupt. I'll, interrupt. I'll clear the room. I will clear the room if anybody else interrupts. John. No, the original application, uh, as submitted, we digested, reviewed, we discussed, and uh, that was rejected. And we have our letter of um, reasons, which was submitted uh, back to you. And I expected that in order to satisfy our concerns from the letter of, re of reasons, statement of reasons, that you would come back with an amended proposal, similar, you know, similar in scope to the first, and addressing our concerns. That's, that's what I expected to happen. I expected a presentation tonight of some sort with some amendments. And we we're going to go through a revised and, and, and say, all right, would the board have a nice conversation? Would the board like to have a reconsideration vote for that? That's what I plan on voting on tonight. I would have made a motion to the board like to reconsider. I would hope we get a second, quick discussion, maybe had a meeting in two weeks or uh, set another public hearing. That's not what's happening. This is just ridiculous, okay? So, Mark, so let's give everyone the benefit of the doubt and just say it was just confusion. It I don't believe it's confusion. I think it's just, I, so I think the board is being played right now, and I'm not standing for it. This discussion is over. Dick, you should meet with Mr. Cobry, discuss what we talked about before, and if they want to set up a time when they're ready to have a presentation in front of this board and transparency with the public, we will do so. There will be no separate meetings, no side meetings with any board member with this. It's all going to be here at the table. And that's it. That's it. I'll take a May motion to adjourn. May I speak? Motion to adjourn. Second. May I speak? Motion's been made. Discussion? Under discussion. We received a memo that says, uh, memo to Board of Selectmen from our attorney that says not to be discussed with one another other than in public session. Jim, we're only discussing the motion to adjourn. This is under that discussion. So before we adjourn, how, how in when are we going to discuss what's on here? Not to waste any calories, John, but you know. Two well, more no, we're going to discuss that to when the they when thing. they come back with an amended um, application. That's what I expected tonight, Jim. I mean, and I understand you want to read off the list. That's fine. If you want to read off that list, it's fine. But he's already stated three times he was not ready and prepared to have this discussion tonight. And there's I don't see where the confusion is. Yep. 
If I'm allowed, I'd, I'd like to say the following. We appreciate your efforts, we do. We have left here after the last two Board of Selectmen meetings thinking one thing, that we were going to meet and discuss things. I've had discussions with Dick and with Cindy. I understand a lot about what this board seems to be looking for. We're prepared to talk about those. I'm not in the position right now because I was operating under a different assumption than evidently I should have been operating under. But we have a lot of common information that we could share that could actually be beneficial to Splitsville, to Patriot Place, and to the town of Foxborough. We're looking at an appeal that's going to go forward in March that, quite frankly, is going to cost all of us a lot of time, money, and effort that we would prefer not to do. We really would. We'd like to get on with the business. I think, if you, won't, if you don't mind, if you could spend a couple of minutes going through this list, I will tell you, in general, what, what we are, are having difficulty with, what we're not having difficulty with. That will allow me to come back here, if you will allow it, at uh, a meeting two weeks hence with a presentation for you. Now that I understand what you're looking for, if you could just give me some guidance about this, I can probably come back here with an effective presentation. It's different than what I was expecting today. I'm sorry, but it is different than what I was expecting today. Tim, do you want to read the list that we have? Well, what, what, <laughs> wait a minute. Uh, Cindy said that um, there were certain a, a few items that were presented to Dick submitted from the selectmen that were non-starters that you didn't even present to Mr. Cobry. Oh no, they were no, they, they were present. presented. Them. They're not in the memo back to you because they're it's, not in the <coughs> They won't consider it. To them. Yeah. Well, it did, but if you read this list, those the things that you said were non-starters would not be would not be so, included. So, so, so in, in 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 all transparency, I think it would be it's good for you you to you know what add, all the selectmen are, are talking about. Add, add That's things a great that idea. you yeah. want yeah. to add that so, so let me go through the include. list, and if, uh, and if there's things sure. that are non-starters for any of the board, mm -hmm. we'll let the craft organization know. If there's things that are missed on the list, we'll add it. I can get and that way, there's a little bit of cooperation here, because, you know, there is, a, there is an appeal coming. Mm -hmm. Are we still uh, contemplating a motion to adjourn? Or is that no, we have to move to our... Okay. Would you withdraw? withdraw it? It. All right, five more minutes. So, I'm sorry, James. And, 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 uh, you know what? Just, I'm, just for um, Mr. Morton is looking for a copy of this list. If anybody has it, I, I can provide him one okay. tomorrow. I've got it on my email. So, okay. Okay. Wait, wait James, tomorrow. continue. Okay. All right. So this is, uh, from what I understand, the, the results of your efforts, getting input from individually, taking it back, going to it in the best that you guys could do together. So. Let's at least hear it, and then that way we both know what are non starters. Okay. Right. Uh, and basically, the heading says uh, to be discussed in public. And, and I think the premise of the first paragraph is as liquor license, um, as selectmen uh, on the liquor licenses, we can do the following. It's under our purview. Require the license holder to pay for additional police officers. An annual amount of money could be required as part of the license condition. Limit the size of Howl at the Moon venue and otherwise segregate it from general public installing glass area dividers. Limit access to the general public through floor plan layouts and use a concierge to check uh, patron identification. Limit live music entertainment to Thursday through Saturday evenings and further define the entertainment to be presented. Change the proposed manager of liquor license so that the person is an employee of Splitsville uh, rather than Howl at the Moon. Limit the number of people allowed at Hollow and uh, Howl at the Moon. Impose more stringent requirements on the size of the drinks, pitchers, uh, than set forth in the rules, i.e., uh, prohibit jello shots. Increase the penalties for violations of any uh, license conditions. Impose conditions on any separate <coughs> entertainment license needed by Splitsville Howl at the Moon. Incorporate many of the conditions imposed on the David and Buster venue, i.e. the use of wristbands, clothing restrictions, et cetera. Um, and that was attached, the, the David and Busters from Braintree, I think, was attached to this. Um, consider shorter hours of operation. So, I mean, this is a list of 12 things. It could be 20 things, it could be five things, but in order to get the most out of the biggest bang for the buck over the next two weeks, Let's talk about this, and if it's a non-starter, we tell them. If we're going to add to it, we tell them. If we want to take from it, now's the time to put it on. If we have something that 
was relayed to the attorney and didn't get on the list or got stricken from the list because it was a non-starter, ask them why it's a non-starter and maybe insist that it's a starter. But not to have this dialogue with a March 12th appeal coming up, there's multiple um, violation um, that is going to the state, or uh, not violations, but um, what's the word? Open meeting. Open meeting violations. Um, complaints. Complaints that we're dealing with. So putting it off two weeks and sitting here like this and fighting about it is not going to do any buddy any good so maybe we can spend 15 minutes and get some basis for this and then have a better uh, understanding at the end of the meeting before is there anything anybody from the board wants to add to that list uh, Lorraine um, reduce the size of the venue significantly well I think that's in there I thought the, that was yeah it's in there the second one the second board. limit the size of the howl at the moon venue she's talking about the entire restaurant I'm talking the, the entire operation, the capacity, the occupancy, the non entertainment part of the facility. No, of the entire facility, the venue. When you say venue, do you mean how? The, the I mean, mean Splitsville, Splitsville venue, anything under the liquor license, anything covered by <clears throat> that square footage. So it's in here twice. Limit the number of people allowed at Howl at the Moon and limit the size of the Howl at the Moon venue. No, she's not talking about Howl at the Moon. She's talking about the entire Splitsville operation. It's an entire Including Howl at the Moon. Okay. Okay. John, do you want to add anything to that? Um, no, but I may actually add some, some things to it. I, I was doing some research that I've been kind of preoccupied, but I may add to that uh, during the week. Okay. And, I'll, and I'll send them to Dick. <coughs> send it directly to, to Dick. Dick. Do not CC the board. Obviously, Ginny, anything you want to add? Yeah, there were there were two things that I had, I had submitted, and I'll explain why I submitted them. Um, the first thing I submitted was to drop Howl at the Moon completely from the plan um, because you were presenting it as Splitsville. Splitsville has its own lounge. Splitsville presented itself as being a bit able to stand alone, very successful for the country. But the reason that I thought that Howl at the Moon was not appropriate is because the Board of Selectmen at, and John had uh, rec uh, reported at a, at a um, executive session, it was last year, uh, the Board of Selectmen had voted five, nothing, all of us, uh, voted to restrict whatever is being placed up at Patriot Place any in regard to liquor license establishments is to have like a sit down venue. Now, how I mean, um, Splitsville is a restaurant lounge with a bowling theme, but it's a sit down, basically sit down, where Howl at the Moon is more like a nightclub. And we had agreed five to nothing um, that we would not want to have um, nightclub venues up there. And that's why I asked that um, how the moon be dropped from the supposedly very successful Splitsville plan, which is successful in other uh, areas. Um, in, in addition, where it seems that the town of Foxborough really wants bowling alleys, I suggested that maybe they add a few more bowling alleys to take up the space where Howl at the Moon would be. That way you would um, still have what everybody seems to want is a bowling alley because that seems to be what is being pushed in in splitsville so my things what uh, eliminate howl at the moon completely and then add to splitsville by adding a couple of more lanes okay thank you, thank you. jim anything you wanted to add no just to put it in context i because I, I was on the board at that time and i think larry was chairman we didn't vote to no. prohibit um, this was this was last year this, uh, no, this was last year. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. think there was a vote taken five to no to. The executive I think it, it was a discussion in context to this, the billboards and receiving money, and there was a list of stuff that came to us. Yes. Um, and it was and from we the craft shouldn't group. Be yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all, it's all open. It's, it's, yeah. It, but it, 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 it we didn't just say we're going to vote against this type of thing. Yeah. It well, was Jim, actually, just to, just to clarify, mm -hmm. it, the, the, there was a uh, collective. Uh, discussion and I think it was the consensus. I don't think there was a vote either, but there was a consensus yeah. of the board that they had no appetite for nightclubs. Correct. Correct. 
but it w but it was in context of a bigger picture. It wasn't um, it wasn't do we want a nightclub? Yes or no? It was no. Actually, it was, it was about really Howl at the Moon. I think the nightclub exactly what we're talking about was a Howl at the Moon. Yeah. Period. But it's, it was it's standing alone. Yeah. This is not really. The same. This is this, that's what I remember was Howl at the Moon standing alone. Period, and. Um, and that that was not going to the, the board pretty much had no appetite for that. And um, then this is a whole different venue. I don't consider it Howl at the Moon. I still do consider okay. it Splitsville. And it's a difference of opinion. We can disagree to disagree. That's what we do a lot up here. Okay. All right. You have your list. I, I'm borrowing Cindy's. Yes. Um, we we received the message that that bowling was good and Howl at the Moon was not so good. And in in terms of your opinion of, of what we should do. And so we, we took this discussion and we tried to figure out ways to uh, minimize the Hell of the Moon influence and maximize the Splitsville experience. And so, you know, the types of things that we, we think we can do uh, to further that are, are actually on here. So one of the things talks about um, limit access to the general public through the floor plan layout and use of a concierge to check patron identification. We can do that, right? The, the game plan is to have a concierge station so that people come in and get directed to the place they want to be directed to. We're, we're really looking at this and saying three nights a week we're going to have Hall at the Moon entertainers playing on the entertainment stage. When they are playing, and you know, just arbitrarily, I, I think it'll be 9 p.m. till closing time. During that period of time, we will control who gains access to that entertainment area and, and limit the number of patrons that get in there. I'm not exactly sure how many patrons you want to have as the maximum number accessing that area. And that's one of the things that I wanted to talk about. But the concept of having a concierge and having limited access to the Hall of the Moon entertainment area when it is Hall of the Moon entertainment, we're on board for. During the other periods of time, so on a Tuesday afternoon when no one's really playing on the stage, we'd like to have free flow of guests among the different areas. And I'm assuming that that's okay. But if it's not, please let me know. Are we prepared to have the discussion now? Uh, yes, if you don't mind. Because I heard you three times say you're not prepared to have this negotiated discussion, and now we're having it. No, I'm sorry, Mark. I'm, I'm trying to be clear. I'm not prepared to make a presentation. I, I wasn't expecting to do that. Right. But I do like the idea of having a discussion and, and trying to further uh, how we can come back to you with a, a plan for for gaining your approval. So if you don't mind, I'd love to do that. And, and I do think we have a lot more commonality than we may think. A another example is change the proposed manager of the liquor license. Yeah, we can do that. We, we talked about doing that. We have uh, a Splitsville assistant manager who um, is prepared to move up here. It's going to take a little bit of time for this person to get familiar with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts rules and regulations, but I'm told that they're prepared to have him come up here and have him do that, have him get uh, familiar with the town of Foxborough regulations, and have him be the manager of record. So we can do that. Uh, well, in your original discussion, you said that was what was you were going to do. So this isn't a concession. You told us you were going to do that anyway. Because Mr. Holy, Hol I believe, yes. he lives in Rentham. He said he was going to be around when everything was going to be, you know, proposed. And, and then a Splitsville manager would come up. So that you had told us. That's not a concession right now. You had already told I, I'm, us I'm that. really sorry. Uh, what I'm trying to do is address the, the mm -hmm. issues on the table. The application we submitted back in October had Paul Holian as the manager of record. And through this process, we've learned that that's not the type of thing that you'd prefer. And so what I'm talking about is from day one, we won't have uh, Mr. Holian as the manager. We'll just go ahead and bring forward the plan of having the Splitsville manager and have that person be the manager of record from day one. So I, I do think that is a concession. But most importantly, we're trying to figure out you know, what we can do to make this a better application for you. And I think that's one of the things you're looking for is you know, change Mr. Holian out and put in a Splitsville manager. By the way, did any of the Board of Selectmen suggest that? No. Mm -hmm. If those are the suggestions by the Board of Selectmen and no one suggested that particular item, where'd that come from? I don't know. Why is it on the list? What's this, it's the, not my list. The, thir <laughs> third, well, the third one down. Any, anybody want to say they brought that up? Lorraine, you want to read the third one again? The third one? Yeah. Well, we're on the second. We're just on two, correct? 
Uh, I, Are you I, about I've been jumping size? around a little bit, and oh, I'm you're sorry. Jumping around. Yeah, okay. sorry about that. Because I don't have the list in front of me. David. Yeah, the manager is item five, I think. <laughs> Nobody suggested that. Okay. No, 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 no. I, I'm, I'm confused. If this is a list that came to you, Dick, from the Board of Selectmen, yeah. how'd they get on there? Well, well, the, in discussions that I've had with with Jim, uh, with you, it, it, it's clear that the board wanted to emphasize the Splitsville part of the application, not how the moon. Because Jenny is right. That was brought up a long time ago as a, as a given. So that to change the manager. Yeah, to, that to was, they, yeah. they, yes, that was, that was. No, no, they were starting with a Howl at the Moon manager, Mr. Right. Holian. And That's they're right. suggesting that they're going to start. No, and, and at the first meeting, they said they were going to start off with Mr. Holian as the manager, and then they were going, going to bring up somebody from Splitsville. Right, right. so they're I saying now that. they're not going to have. I remember him saying that. They're not going to have Howl at the Moon. They're starting mm -hmm. right at the beginning with Splitsville. That's mm -hmm. a concession that they're making. No, it's only the manager. The how the moon component yeah, is still in. I'm saying, right, but it's it's a one piece of multiple pieces of a concession. Right. Yeah. All right, so this is what I mean. This is going to be. Uh, we got executive session in seven minutes. Well, Next, uh, we talked about limiting the number of people. We um, we can. Uh, well, one of the items that we're having a little difficulty with is the glass partition. This is. Um, the second item, which is having some physical separation from the bowling space and the entertainment space. And given the fact that most of the time, you know, your typical Tuesday afternoon, we're hoping to have a holistic space where there's free flow of, of patrons, uh, we'd prefer not to have fixed partitions. What we're hoping to do is to control the access to the space with uh, temporary partitions, to have you know uh, curtains and barricades and things of that nature to make sure that people don't enter the entertainment space when the Hall of the Moon entertainment is is on stage, you know, during that period of time, roughly 9 p.m. till closing time, Thursday through Saturday. But during the other times, we'd like to be able to remove those temporary partitions and have the free flow of patrons throughout the space. So hopefully that addresses your concern and also allows us to operate the business as we'd like to be able to do. I can totally understand that. Thank you. I really do. Okay. So you need to take the list back because we're running out of time, because we're too busy arguing about all kinds of other things earlier. So always surprising. Yeah, it's a very. I'm very actually very surprised at surprised. this meeting, the outcome of this meeting. I, I'm disappointed. So if you want to take that back, two weeks, come back, see what's palatable, as John would say, and come back and see if the boards. We'll reconsider. Okay. If Can any of the members have any additional items they want to get to Dick, if you could do that in the next couple of days so they can maximize the uh, Don't two copy weeks. copy it to one of them. Just yeah. send it to us. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'll take a motion to adjourn and go in executive session. So moved. John? Uh, yes. Lorraine? Motion to enter into executive session to discuss oh, strategy regarding litigation matters, Wellner Dutton case, attorney Doug Lewison and attorney John Davis. Uh, we will adjourn from executive session to open session to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Jim? Yes. Lorraine? Yes. Ginny? Yes. John? Yes. Mark? Yes. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.